Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I want to talk about the difference between IndyCar, there it is, IndyCar, and Formula One. Okay, that's a, that's a very old one, 2009. I mean, if you don't know very well racing, you won't really see any difference. You know, they, they look alike, sort of look alike. You know, open wheel, front wing, rear wing, uh, bigger tire the rear at the front, but they're actually quite different. In Formula One, every team creates its chassis, its gearbox, buys an engine from either Ferrari, Mercedes, Alpine, or now it's called Red Bull Racing, Honda, let's put it that way. So for manufacturer in IndyCar, We've got two, Honda or Chevrolet. In Formula One is the hybrid technology, so you got a V6 turbo with also a battery on the car and an electric engine. Uh, all together, it is more than 1,000 1, horsepower in Formula One. In IndyCar, it's a much simpler engine in terms of technology, but still very, very pushed. So it's a V6 turbo, but no, no hybrid for now. Other difference is that in IndyCar, we run ethanol as a fuel, petrol in Formula One. So that's a, that's a different, different type of fuel. In any car, also everyone's got the same car. So you can choose the engine, Chevrolet or Honda, but then everyone has got the same car. The only part that you can, you're free to create, design, update, upgrade, whatever, is the dampers. And that's where there's a difference between the, the smaller team and the bigger team. You know, damper budget is, is really big at, at a bigger team trying to generate as much grip as we can from those dampers. That's the difference uh, between the teams in IndyCar, whereas in Formula One, you create your own car. Uh, obviously, you try to copy what the others are doing great. Then, you know, Formula One is worldwide. Uh, you go racing everywhere, Australia, Asia, America, Europe. Whereas in IndyCar, we stay in the US, apart from one race in Toronto, Canada. I'm hoping we're gonna go more. We're gonna go to Mexico, to Canada. I would love to go back to uh, Australia, Surface Paradise, and why not in Europe? That'd be great. Uh, I'll be able to see many fans. That's my wish list. Formula One has got very normal circuits and the street courses, which are Monaco, Singapore, Baku, and Jeddah. And then in IndyCar, you've got the normal racetrack like Indianapolis GP, Road America, you've got the street courses like Detroit, St. Pete, and you've got the ovals. And then within the ovals, you've got a super speedway like Indianapolis, uh, 2.5 mile or four kilometers lap, and a very short track like Iowa or Gateway, which are even less than a mile, so even less than 1.6 kilometers a lap. So very different in that aspect. Qualifying, obviously, you know Q1, Q2, Q3 from Formula One. In IndyCar, on the normal road course, we kind of get the same system, but then on oval, it's two to four laps average for your qualifying. So you're on your own on the racetrack, you only have one attempt, a couple of laps, or at the Indy 500, you get four laps in a row, and it's the average of those four laps that are doing your uh, qualifying order. And then after qualifying, we've got a race start. So that's another big difference. Formula One has got a standing race start, while IndyCar's got a rolling race start. Uh, rolling starts are amazing when you're in pole position. Uh, you just go on throttle whatever you want, and off you go. In Formula One, it's quite tricky. The race start with the clutch and getting the right raves and getting the right tire temps. So a rolling start is easier, apart when you're at the back, where there's a lot of accordion. You know, everyone goes a little bit on throttle and the brake, throttle, brake, throttle, brake. So you're like, mm -hmm. And you never really know when it's gonna go. So you really want to uh, try to be as, as, as sharp as you can there. Then the races. So once you've done the race start, Formula One, you will change tires once, maybe twice, and no refueling. You go out, and then when the tires work, worn out, you come in, put new tires, go out again, and so on and so on. Whilst in IndyCar, we've got a very small fuel tank, uh, 18 gallons, 60 something liters. So every 20 laps, you have to come in the pit to refuel the car. So the car goes really fast in the race. We only half a second slow in the race that we are in qualifying, just because we always put new tires, go for 20 laps, back in the pit, 20 laps. So the races are three, four stops, eight at the Indy 500. You know, such a long race, you've got eight pit stops. In Formula One, you wanna wait for a safety car to pit, because that saves you a lot of time. In IndyCar, when there's a caution, safety car, the pits are closed. So you cannot pit. So if you've pitted the lap before, you're king of the world. If you haven't pitted, you may be in big trouble and lose a lot of position. So strategy is very different. In, in Formula One, it's very clear before the race what sort of strategy is gonna be like. You know exactly you're gonna pit between lap 21 and lap 23. In IndyCar, we know what the fuel tank can do, but then if there's any yellows or caution or safety car, we can go longer and the strategy is much more on the go. It's, it's very hard to have any software that can predict anything. 
Also, we've got very limited testing on the tires. Uh, so like most of the time, we would go in the race not knowing how, what's the tire life, especially on the red tires, because uh, we're very limited in how many we've got and we want to save them for the race. So yeah, that's, uh, that's not an easy one in terms of strategy. You know, I think the beauty of IndyCar is with all the settings, the roll center, the geometry, the dampers, the springs, you can really make the car to your liking, right? You can really make it that you love driving the car and it fits your driving styles. While it's in Formula One, you do have to adapt with what you got. It's dominated by aerodynamics, meaning that if the base of the car goes understeer, um, hand of the braking and, and turning in like the Haas would do uh, over the five years I was there, and you don't like that, you just have to drive around it. I think Daniel Ricciardo is a really good example. Such a talented driver, uh, won races, done really good at Renault, went to McLaren and struggled a lot just because the car doesn't suit his driving style. Changing a driving style is a challenge. It's not that easy, you know. You can do it, you can adapt, that's for sure, but it's never gonna be 100% natural and that makes it tricky. In the car, the beauty is that you can you can make it the way you like it, which is great, but also makes it that the lap time are super close to each other because it's not the one that adapts the best, it's gonna go the fastest. It's everyone gets to a point where, you know, the chassis has been run for 11 years now, the team knows very well the, the car, so it, it's hard to make a difference. It's possible, but it's hard. Yeah, budget. Budget, huge difference. Formula One, you're looking at 150 to 200 million a year. In the car, you're looking at, I don't know, 15 to 20 million, so it's 10 times cheaper. Obviously, there's less travel, but yes, there's less people as well, but it's not less professional. I really think that IndyCar is very professional. Formula One stays the pinnacle, there's, there's no doubt about it, and I was lucky to, to do it for 10 years, and no, I'm lucky to be able to do IndyCar and discover something new. Those are the big differences. Maybe one that I forgot, it's the pit stop. So in Formula One, 1.88 seconds was the time that uh, Red Bull took to change four tires. In IndyCar, you're waiting for the fuel. So the fuel is gonna be about 6.8, 7 to 7.5 seconds of refueling and you can tell that uh, if you've ever seen a race in IndyCar it's only one guy per wheel so the, the change wheel change goes much slower so there's 17 guys in Formula 1 doing the pit stop and there's only four five six uh six in IndyCar so obviously pit stop are slower but you're waiting on the fuel so you actually don't really mind going as fast as you can on the tires I think yes I think I went through pretty much everything again don't forget to subscribe like ask me any questions maybe I forgot something that you really wanted to ask and I'm, I'm, I'll be more than happy to answer to your question so leave me a comment like the video subscribe to the channel see you very soon thank you very much guys